and also, but they might not notice. I mean, they've been up since 5.30 in the morning. So, but if you want to be picky, and we like to be picky, you've got to put that, that security ink back. Well, you can't buy it. There are a couple of places where you can get a hold of the yellow ink or the red ink in um, small quantities. But the black ink is really, really hard to come by. So once again, in our world, if you can't buy it, how do you get it? You make it yourself. We made ours with the absolutely cheapest color inkjet cartridge we could find at the local CVS. You see, another name for this security ink is composite ink. Um, this is an ugly splotch, I know. I got a C plus in art. Um, the point is it's a proof of concept. Th that is invisible to the scanner and that ballot was accepted as authentic by both of the scanners. And you know what this, this ink is? This is the stuff your home inkjet printer makes when you run out of black. It just takes the color inkjet cartridge, it mixes all the colors up together, and all I did was stick a paintbrush in all the holes and smear it around. And that is security ink. So, So what did we learn from all of this? The first thing that we learned is that the certification procedures in place to guarantee that, that vo vendors, voting machines, and their whole systems are secure just don't work. You know what these procedures are? Are the comments in the same format? Do the variables follow a naming convention? Is there only one return statement per function? I don't see how that enhances the security at all. The second thing that we learned is that the security of a system that is intended or needs to be secure can't be added on as an afterthought. You can't just add a couple of locks and a seal and throw a password in and claim that the system's secure. If you need it to be secure, and then you've got to design security in from its inception. Oh, by the way, um, the touchscreen voting machines have hard-coded passwords. Um, we found a comment next to a hard-coded password that said, I kid you not, this comment said, we hard-coded this so that hackers couldn't use it. <laughs> yeah, you can't make this stuff up. Um, yeah, okay, okay. The third thing that we learned is that, well, we weren't the only ones looking at the system. Along with the academic teams, Ohio hired um, a group of commercial software testers. And they have a methodology, and they've got a business that, that goes around and, and trying to determine the security of, of, of software systems. And they didn't find anything that we didn't find. But we found a lot that they didn't. So why did our ad hoc, thrown together uh, method find so much more than, than they did? We think it's because we approached it like hackers. We sat down, every one of us with our little piece, and we basically said, how do I attack the system? If I, if I poke at it here, which way does it move, and what does that tell me? And it allowed us to go off on tangents if it looked interesting. And that allowed us to make some of our, our best finds. For example, the Palm Pev emulator. The first thing we noticed when we unboxed that touchscreen is that there's no on off switch. But if you stick that little box in that little slot, the machine comes on. Wow, okay, there's a switch in there somewhere. If you put the wrong one in, it comes on, but it gives you an error message, wrong Pev. Um, so that means there's some communication going on. And so the next step was just try to try and decode that communication. Um, another example is, is finding the ballots. The, the reason we found we could forge ballots was because we tried to make a photocopy and we sent it through and it spit it out and said possibly counterfeit. So we thought, okay, the papers aren't the same color. The um, weight, this is paper and this is cardstock. Um, but it, looking closely at the ballot, you could see that some boxes didn't look exactly the same as the other. It was a little fuzzier and not quite as clear. Okay, what does that mean? And that tangent 
led us to that. And then the one other thing that we did is that we stepped back and looked at this not as this problem with this machine and this problem with that one, but as pieces of an entire system. And we were able to, to, to find our major discovery, that of viral propagation, because we said, we've got a vulnerability here. We've got this piece of a puzzle. How do we use that to attack this piece? And so the fourth discovery, and this is the most important, is that we were able to, to actually demonstrate of an, an attack that a single person, a single voter could do at a single machine that would virally propagate all the way back to the election central headquarters of the county. And th what this means is that not only could an attacker change the votes on one machine, not only could a, a malicious poll worker alter the results for a precinct, but one person in one podunk little precinct, somewhere in, in the middle of nowhere, can upload malicious code onto a machine, which will then write itself onto the removable media, which at the end of the election gets taken out of that voting machine and sent back to the headquarters, where it gets put into that Windows box running the election management software, where it takes advantage of a number of vulnerabilities and writes itself onto that, and thereby alters the results for the election of the entire county. And if you don't think that's important, please remember that in 2004, the entire country waited to find the results of who got Ohio's electoral votes. And who got Ohio's electoral votes depended on the results of Cuyahoga County. One single county made all the difference in who became president. So, you know, it's true what they say. One voter really can make a difference. <laughs> So this is not part of our, ma our mandate, or not part of our contract with Ohio, but it is kind of an educated uh, op opinion of ours. It, what do we do about this? Um, we're going to have to be really careful. These machines are in use right now, and they will be in use in November. Now, we are hearing from a number of places. Ohio, for one, is getting rid of their touchscreens. Um, we've got a request from Texas, of all places, to send them a report about which optical scanners would be better than um, our opinion on the optical scanners, because they want to get rid of their, their touch screens. Texas, of all places. So maybe we're making a difference here. Um, but in, in the short term, all we can really do is be very careful. So I would like to um, ask all of you who are of voting age and US citizens to become poll workers at your next election. Um, the, your counties and your precincts need you. Most poll workers are geriatric and <laughs> wouldn't recognize a problem if they saw it. Um, at least your technical expertise could be of use. Um, in the long term, we've got to build a better mousetrap. And that's our dog. <laughs>